Hello, I'm Christian Manientes, and I am the award winner for the undergraduate poster category of mathematics from the Pathways Symposium for the A&M system. And this is the project that won the award, A Practical Understanding of the Mysterious Central Limit Theorem. Hello, I'm uh, Dr. Blut uh, from um, the Mathematics program at Texas A&M San Antonio. And the Central Limit Theorem is actually the theory uh, that connects mathematics and statistics together. It's actually very important. And uh, so let me just give you a quick example. If you go ahead and ask, let's say, female students weight, and if you just go ahead and put those data on a X, Excel, probably you are going to get some uh, very complicated data points, so you don't see any relation. But if you go ahead and ask, let's say, um, the weight of the three female students and then take the average of those students and have different, you know, samples that have um, just three female students, and if you go ahead and draw all those points, you will have like approximately bell shaped curve. So the central limit theorem is actually a um, great tool to connect the sample with the population, with the actual population. So I was looking to find another, yes, you can say application of the central limit theorem to see if that could apply to random numbers. So I did a sampling of 30 random people using a method I found from a project by Mr. Dr. Bob Stephenson. And what he did was he got the last four digits of people's phone numbers and used those as random numbers. So I initially used those 120 numbers to make my first distributions and then had different sized samples. As you can see down here, there's just the normal 120 numbers right there. And this is a sample size of four. From there, I went into the C programming language, just something you can use to make programs, and made a program that would generate a varying amount of random numbers, and would take those random numbers and put them into an Excel file. And then I could play around with that and make the graphs I made here. The amount of numbers varied, but the varies were, I did 100, 10,000, and 1 million. And then for those generated random numbers, I had sample sizes of four, six, and eight. As you can see here, the larger our sample size gets, and it's better of a large population, the more normal, where we have that nice little hump in the middle, we get. Here's the computer program that did everything. I coded that myself in a little environment. Looking at this, I can see that yes, the central limit theorem does apply to random numbers. And what it tells me is that if we're finding a trend like this in random numbers, then maybe random isn't as random as we give it uh, credit to be. 